Hi and welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin, and today we are celebrating an appliance that can be found in almost every single British kitchen of every single social class, ethnicity, age, gender, etc. And that is, you already know because of the title of this video, but it's the kettle. And not just any kettle, but the electric kettle. British people love an electric kettle. This is not a stereotype, this is just a fact. People on the internet from other kettleless countries are confused sometimes, asking questions about why the UK is obsessed with electric kettles. But the answer is simple. It boils water quickly, which means you can keep on drinking those cups of tea all day long. You can set it and forget it and walk away, unlike other means of heating up water. Also, they're relatively inexpensive and they're just efficient. Now, I'm not actually going to claim that efficiency is one of the core values of the Brits. I have been through the visa process here, and certainly UKVI is not that concerned with how fast they can go. But when it comes to boiling water, these people do not mess around. Anyway, in this video, we're deep diving into the world of kettles. Which kettles came before the electric ones? What in the world is the Great British Kettle Surge? And so much more. Typically, we start out by talking about the history of uh, the topic of the video, and we are going to talk about the history of the kettle, but I'm trying to hook you with this video and get you to keep watching. So as interesting as I promise I will make the history of the kettle, we're actually gonna go over some fun facts about kettles first. So, did you know that electric companies actually can tell when a huge moment in British television is happening or just happened due to the electric surge coming from everyone putting their kettle on? I don't know why I did that in quotes because they are actually putting their kettle on, but it's also kind of like a phrase in the UK. Anyway, um, they're all putting their kettle on at the same time. I swear to you, this is a real documented thing. For instance, in 2010, Coronation Street, which is a British soap opera, did an episode all about a tram disaster. And the British public all raced to their kettles to make themselves a cup of tea to calm themselves down because the national grid noticed that the surge of the demand at the end of Coronation Street was higher than usual. Another example is that during King Charles's coronation, the national grid saw another huge spike that required the teams behind the scenes to make sure they balanced the electricity supply and demand with a close eye so all of those kettles didn't disrupt the system. This is also known as the kettle on effect or the Great British Kettle Surge. It occurs more than you might think, and while each kettle itself isn't significant, it's them being all turned on simultaneously around the nation that creates this huge demand for electricity. And did you know that during this time period, because of all of those kettles, the UK actually has to import energy from other countries to keep up with demand, often coming from France. Next up in our deep dive into kettles is the actual percentage of households in the UK that own one. The most recent statistics I could find are from around 2017, with a 95% of households owning an electric kettle. It's fluctuated between 94 and 98% since 2005, but this is what I mean when I say that truly a majority of households own them. And I'm not even sure who the extra 5% are, but they clearly just moved to the UK and just haven't purchased a kettle yet, or they're American expats who are microwaving their water. I don't know. Here's another fun fact about kettles. Don't know if that has actually ever been said in a sentence before. Um, but while they are very efficient, there is a lot of wasted energy from them. In 2013, the Energy Savings Trust estimated that three quarters of British households boil more water than necessary, and that almost 68 million pounds is spent on wasted energy every year. So don't boil a full kettle if you don't need it all. Moving on, one of the more interesting things I learned while researching everything I could find about electric kettles was that the Brits were the first military to install boiling vessels into their tanks, a design that some other countries have now copied. Part of the original idea and need for it did have to do with tea. So it's a myth that there exists complete tea making facilities or kettles within a British tank, but essentially what happened during World War II, people started to notice that many casualties happened while the troops were outside their vehicles, stopping to use what was called a Benghazi burner, which was a can placed in a hole in the ground with burning wood. 
They would use it to heat rations and to brew tea and heat water for other things, and they did have to be outside of the tank to do that. Of course, getting out and stretching your legs from being inside a cramped tank is also good for morale, but the problem is that you were then exposed to the enemy, and that's never a good thing. In fact, during the Battle of Normandy, 14 tanks were knocked out by the Germans within 15 minutes as British crews were outside their tanks on a tea and rest break. So the Brits came up with the idea to include a boiling vessel inside of the tank. The first one being the Centurion, which was used just a few years after the Second World War. It's not a kettle exactly, but it works similarly, and Brits could have access to hot water now to make a cup of tea, boil their rations, and be able to clean things from within the tank. A tank can even be considered completely out of operation and not usable if the boiling vessel isn't working. Now let's dive into the history of the electric kettle because kettles themselves have been in use for a long, long time. But obviously the electric kettle has taken some time to make its way into kitchens across the UK. The word kettle itself originates from an old Norse word meaning cauldron. And the first kettle shaped item was found in Mesopotamia dating back to between 30, 500 and 2000 BC, or would I say 3500, and 2000 BC. For many years, kettles were heated over an open flame, and silver kettles were a popular part of English tea tradition during the 1700s. But by the 19th century, people had had enough of this inefficient way to heat water, and things started to get more interesting. Kettles switched from iron to copper because it's a better conductor of heat. And in the 20th century, gas ovens with hobs or stoves, as we would say in America, means that people could now use a kettle that looks like this and was heated while sitting on the hob directly from the flame of the gas ring if it was a gas oven. Um, and they also could do it on an electric cooker using a thicker ground base. The handle was now designed to not be as hot, so you could hold it without a cloth or other method of not burning your hand off, like the ones that would hang over a fire, and you could actually now tell if the water was boiling easier because the steam would come from the spout and there was a singing sound of a kettle heated that would actually go quiet when the water was boiling. After that comes the whistling kettle. It has a detachable whistle fitted over the spout that gave a whistling alarm when the water was boiling. Now, the electric kettle, using electricity to heat water rather than kneading a hob, started to change everyone's lives, kind of, around 1890. Funnily enough, though the US doesn't really use electric kettles today, the Carpenter Electric Company in the US was one of the first to launch an electric kettle. This was in 1891. Right around this time, a UK company, Crompton & Co, also released their own electric kettle model. However, the heating element had to be housed separately to the water as it couldn't be immersed in the water, so it was still pretty inefficient and it took over 10 minutes for the water to boil. The credit for the creation of the electric kettle actually goes to a man named Leslie Large who worked for a company called Bullpit and Sons in Birmingham in the UK, not in Alabama. He wasn't actually the first to create the electric kettle as this doesn't happen until 1922, 30 years after the first versions came around, but his design in 1922 allows for a submersible electric heating element more similar to the electric kettles of today. And obviously this is better than needing a separate compartment. So that's why he gets credit because kettle users everywhere could now breathe a sigh of relief that it was now much easier and faster to boil water for a cup of tea or for other things. Today, modern kettles have a safety cutoff function that means that the kettle will stop boiling water once it boils. Essentially, the heating connection is broken and electricity is prevented from reaching the element once it hits boiling point. This is much more practical for being able to actually walk away from the kettle and do other things. And if you forget about the kettle boiling, no problem. Besides the knock to your electricity bill, uh, nothing bad is going to happen. One major problem of the stovetop and whistling kettles were that they would keep boiling until someone manually turns off the heat, which means if you forgot about it, you could end up with a burnt out kettle. Electric kettles are much more common in Commonwealth countries than in the US. I've mentioned multiple times before that Americans in general don't really use electric kettles. Um, you can purchase them in America, but 
not necessarily common in kitchens. I hadn't even seen one before moving to the UK, but British people are very proud of their kettles. And I loved some of the responses to this Reddit thread of someone asking why Brits use electric kettles. You can also buy kettle themed merch from places like Etsy, including an I'll put the kettle on poster, and you can get a relatively plain and boring one like this that might be used in an office, or you can get super cutesy ones like this. That brings us to the end of our deep dive on electric kettles and how they relate to the UK. I hope you learned something new today. Definitely let me know all of your kettle knowledge in the comments because I'm sure my mostly British audience who watch this are full of fascinating facts about all of the kettles they've used in their lifetime. As a reminder, um, if you haven't heard before, I do have a separate channel now that is specifically deep dives like this uh, with American specific content. So I will also link that in the description. The channel is called All American Atlas if you want to look it up. Um, and that is all I've got for now. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.